Welcome back to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, JB Long, and fresh off a bye week, the Rams are back on the field. They're set for a trip to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers in week 12. And our guest is a third year defensive lineman who's enjoying a breakthrough moment in his career. Marquise Copeland is with us. Marquise, great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. How was your bye week? It was good. Uh, got to spend some time with the family. Got to go back to Cincinnati, see some, some Cincinnati football. So it was a great bye week, for sure. 17 game regular season plus everything you do in OTAs, training camp, preseason. Give us a sense of just how long the NFL campaign is and what a bye week means to a player. Uh, that the the bye week just uh, is a time to relax, unload. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a long time. You get to spend with your brothers and everything, but you want to go back and spend it with the family because that's just something you do. You don't get to do all the time during the football season, especially since the COVID started. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it came at a good time for this particular team? Uh, uh yeah, I feel like um, we've been playing some good football in the in the the beginning half of the f- the season, and the second half is just something is going to be for the for the for the world to see. Yeah, yeah, something sort of for the world to see. You individually uh, have become a contributor over the last couple of games. How do you yeah. think you earned that opportunity? Uh, just just really just staying there, staying focused, you know, staying in tune with my coaches, my teammates, you know, anything they need, I, I'm there for them. So, so they've all been supportive of me and helping me through this, this time. As a rostered practice squad player, mm-hmm. how does that go? Like at what point during the week do you know, I'm going to get a helmet, I'm going to dress for game day, I'm going to be a part of this game plan? Uh, the beginning of the week, my coach tries to do a really, a really good job, you know what I'm saying, getting me in, getting me adjusted, making sure I know everything. Um, he makes sure I don't don't come to anything that I'm like, oh, I, I haven't seen this in practice. All right. So he gets me very ready. Hmm. Sure. You performed well, at least according to a service like Pro Football Focus. Don't uh, know what your thoughts are on that grading service, but you got a 72 against Tennessee, an 84 against San Francisco. Okay. How do you think you played? I, I think I played. I, I, I did my part, and I, and I helped the team, you know, so I, I helped them as much as I could. And um, <clears throat> I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, my, my, all my teammates came up to me, my coaches, you know what I'm saying? They all congratulated me. Uh, people from back home even congratulated me. So uh, just if I can help our team win, I, I think that's that's all I want. Even if you don't believe it, you got a higher grade than Aaron Donald against the <laughs> Niners. So I think you just retire on that walk away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, and I don't know. That's that's the ghost. So yeah, <laughs> for sure. If I got a higher grade than I'm going to tell him. Is it your expectation you're going to go again against Green Bay? Uh, whatever the coaches want, whatever the coaches want, I know I'm going to be ready. Mm-hmm. So if they want me to go, I'll be right there. What would it What would it mean to you to play at Lambeau Field? Like, does that place have a a special corner of your football mind? So, so me, uh, I would say I've I've never played there, but but going against guys like uh, Aaron Rodgers and stuff like that, you know, that would be like oh, wow. I grew up watching him, mm-hmm. so that's something like that's that. Big eyes for like a first few minutes and then, okay, time to to snap in now. Let's go. No snow, but there is a forecasted high of 37. What are your feelings about cold weather games? I was born in Cleveland. (laughs) (laughs) So it's fine. I don't don't really think uh, too much into it. I think I'll be fine. Uh, It was cold when I went back this week. It feels good, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm ready for it. Marquise, where did you watch last year's playoff loss to the Packers? Where were you? I was on the I was in the press box. Mm-hmm. We were we were upstairs in the press box. Yeah. So you travel with the team. Yeah, I was, was traveling with the team. Lambo's at less than full capacity. Yeah. So you've at least put eyes on it, but you didn't get to experience it at field level. Yeah, I haven't got to experience it. They rushed 36 times for 188 yards in that game. Couple of touchdowns. Chewed up 36 minutes of possession. Okay. And coming off the loss to San Francisco, where there was I guess a similar blueprint for keeping the Rams' offense off the field. What's it going to take to disrupt the Packers? running game and get them in some unfavorable down and distances this week? Uh, just as a defense, just playing together, really, you know, uh, believing in each other. We came back off this bye week. We're all feeling fresh. We're all feeling good, comfortable. So just playing as a team, as a defense, you know, and staying together. I think the narrative is that the uh, Rams have been overpowered, overrun against the uh, Titans and the 49ers. I wonder what's your take on physicality and the nature of this team and how they might respond to that challenge? Uh, I think I think uh, the Rams we respond for sure time in and time in we we respond every every time every chance we get. Um, I don't think anybody up front is is more physical than us. I don't think I know what guys behind me. I know I know I don't think anybody is more physical mm-hmm. than us for sure. But 
I think we just need to come together as a team and we'll be okay. I agree with you looking at the roster. Greg Gaines, Ashawn Robinson, yeah. Aaron Donald, yourself, Floyd. Yeah. There's no reason this shouldn't be an elite run stuffing group, is there? No reason. Yeah. Hmm. What's your unique skill set and role within the defensive front? My skill set is to, to be there for my team whenever we need it. I, I feel like uh, my skill set is just to, to, to come in right now. My role is just to come in right now, do what I need to, be, what I need to do, what I believe I can do, you know, and, 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 and help the team. Just to help the team. You've evolved as a player, right, going back to your prep days and then college days. You weren't always an interior defensive lineman, were you? No. So coming out of high school, I was about – to 15 to 20 I was playing linebacker and then I, I moved to DN because I wanted that's that's why I wanted since I wanted to play D line mm -hmm. I love that and uh then I just kept moving in and I, I wanted to want to play D tackle and stuff like that yeah I can't wait to talk about your high school in just a moment but first let me ask about more present day things including Eric Henderson and he's got such a great reputation around yeah. here your position group I think is one of the best in the league what makes him a special position coach uh, caring about us, like I think <clears throat> I've had a I've I've had a lot of coaches that care about me. I'm, so I'm blessed about that. But just it's the same thing, just caring about us. Actually, like one to see your players do good in any aspect of their life, uh, especially football. You know, he he takes it very personal. So I think I think his thing is just caring and want us to do and be in the best positions that we can be. Marquise is a former college free agent from the 2019 class. This mm -hmm. is now your third year as a professional, yeah. and you're now three games you know, on the field wearing yeah. a Rams uniform. Was it a long wait? Did you have to have patience for this moment to come? Uh, yeah, you, ha you, you have to have patience, uh, but it couldn't have been a better time. You know, I think God, God uh, he, he makes sure you're ready at the time you need to be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, when your jersey is called, then, yeah. It'll be ready. So yeah. it's been a long process, but I've been been ready, been waiting. So you're saying maybe if they threw you right into the deep end back in 2019 as a rookie, you wouldn't have been as prepared mentally or physically as you were this time around. I, I would I would say that I'm very more I'm I'm way more comfortable mm -hmm. now. So yeah, I feel like uh, maybe as a as a as a rookie. You know, trying to get everything, trying to be behind Aaron Donald, behind all the, like Michael Brockers when he was here. You know, being behind all these great players, he's like, okay, well, I need to really step my game up. I, I see where I was, and now I didn't see where I have mm -hmm. to be at. You know, to to be on their level. I'm not there yet by any means, but I'm trying to get there. Geographically, does it feel like home? You comfortable here in Southern California? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't take too much to get to to make Southern California like home. All right, let's talk about your background then. You talked about home in the Midwest in mm -hmm. Ohio a, a couple times already. You're Cleveland raised. Yes, sir. Bedford High School. Mm -hmm. I looked up some notable alumni. <laughs> Do you know who the most famous Bedford graduate is? The most famous, I would have to say, it was Holly Berry. There you go. <laughs> I didn't think that one would get past you. <laughs> Uh, her Wikipedia page says cheerleader, honor student, editor of the newspaper, and prom queen. Okay. So, uh, this was before your time, but did uh, the Jared Goff audible from 2018 Holly Berry ever cross your radar? No, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that one, I don't think, but I'll tell anybody if they want to know. <laughs> you know she went to my school, right? <laughs> they went back and forth on social media. It's pretty cool. There is one, uh, one prominent NFL connection as well. In fact, you just played against him at SoFi yeah. Stadium. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Who's that? The Roger. Roger, Roger Saffold, Saffold yeah. who had some great years here with the Rams. Mm -hmm. Had you connected with him previously through your high school roots, or was that the first <clears throat> time in person? So uh, no, during during in high school, and I, they would talk about him a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't really got to meet him because I know the year before he was here, and then he left when I was coming in. So right. I haven't really got to talk to him. He's a, a little bit older than me. But we talked after the game and um, and stuff like that. And we're we're keeping in contact. We're, we should keep in more contact now. And I feel like, yeah. Is it true that Bedford High School is also the Bearcats? The mascot is the yeah. same. Okay. Did it feel like it was just meant to be then uh, my, to go to Cincinnati? It felt like it was meant to be. Yeah. No, my my grandma there. My um my mother used to always make jokes about that. Oh, he just doesn't want to be anything else but a size of Bearcat. When I was going to college. Are those two women some of the most influential in your family life and your football yeah, career? Definitely, well, they they text me every single week. My my grandmother, and my mother text me every single week. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Keep keep going. You're all right. Keep 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 your head up. So yeah, they're very influential. And have they been able to see you play a Rams game in person yet? Uh, no, they haven't seen been able to see me play in person yet. Um, but 
they if it's on TV, they're not missing it for sure. That's why I got to get you on the active roster week yeah, in and week out yeah, so they can plan around yeah, you, right, Marquise? No, definitely. All right, let's go to our closing segment. It's called Three and Out. Uh, and just like all of your teammates who have come through the Rams Reveal podcast previously, if you get all three of these questions correct, I'll make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf, okay? okay. And let's continue with the uh, theme of the Cincinnati Bearcats. True or false? They're going to go undefeated, and they're going to make the college football playoff. Very true. <laughs> you keeping a close eye on them? Yes, I am. I, I talk. I talk about those guys every week. You ask me about them around here. I talk about them every week. So they got ECU to finish right, and then mm-hmm. the AAC championship against Houston. Yep. Road win at Notre Dame. You got to think they're in. Two W's. We're, we're we're going. All right. Question number two on three and out. What does your ideal Thanksgiving dinner plate look like? Uh, my ideal. So. I I'm gonna have to go turkey, macaroni and cheese. Definitely macaroni and cheese. That's a staple. Um, we're gonna have rolls. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I eat. No veggies necessary. And vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Some vegetables for sure. No, but uh, my grandmother, uh, my grandma was a, sh- a chef before, so she they cook our our Thanksgiving at home is. Everybody has something they want. They they eat way more than I like. They eat have way more suggestions than I do. So, yeah. And is it better on the first pass, or do you like it the next day with leftovers more? That's a tough question. I know that's a bonus question. Yeah, that, that's, that's not question I, number three. I think I think uh, the second day, yeah, because you don't have to clean up as much. <laughs> <laughs> so the second day is definitely you can just eat the food or now. wait as long, right? Yeah. You can microwave that. Yeah, and get no, right back for to sure. It. Final question: You're a father. Mm-hmm. There's a Marquise Jr. Yes. How old is he? He's three years old. Okay. So what is a three-year-old hoping for for Christmas this year? Um, he's hoping for a lot of things. He's hoping for a lot of toys, a, a lot of clothes. He, he won't stop growing. So a lot of clothes. Uh, he's hoping for a lot of things. I, I, he's hoping for a whole bunch. Because three is the first time that they know it's coming uh-huh. and have expectations yeah. and can make requests. Yeah, no, he's playing with, like, before before this year, he would play with anything. You give him anything, he'll play with it. He'll, he'll watch a movie, he'll play with it. Uh, he'll, he'll watch it. Now, he wants cars, dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, he has all types of toys in his room now. So, he yeah, he, he's ready for it. We went to the mall the other day, actually, and he wanted the biggest car in there. He, he kept kept pointing at it and I don't think he knows how to work it at all but he wanted it for sure awesome wishing you and your family all the generations a wonderful Thanksgiving week and holidays ahead have a great trip to Green Bay uh, I hope you continue your breakout campaign thank you I all appreciate right. it for Marquise Copeland and all the Bearcats all right I'm JB Long and this is Rancher Field.